of you are thankful to be in the house of the Lord today, sitting in the house? Hallelujah. Yes. We're so glad to be here. So lift your hearts and your souls to the Lord today as we sing. Just sing with us. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the Yes. 
come and allowed us to come back into this building, Lord. We thank you for filling us up thus far. But Lord, we thank you for this moment in time that you're going to continue to pour us up till we're overflowing. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for Pentecost Sunday. I thank you for pouring out your blood on that cross. But Lord, I thank you for pouring out your spirit on Pentecost Day. Lord, let that be this moment in time as well. Fill us up to overflowing, God. excited to be back in the house of the Lord this morning? Inside! Inside! Welcome home! Welcome home, South Cleveland. We're so excited to have you this morning. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. It is Open Door Sunday. We have opened our doors. There's a song we sang a little bit earlier about open the prison doors, and sometimes it feels that way. But today we have opened our doors, 8 a.m., 9.30, and our final service today at 11. We pray for Pastor Livesey's voice as he's preached for, this is going to be his third time today. And he's not just one of these mild, timid pastors and preachers. So he has poured out his heart. We've already had four saved this morning. Would you give the Lord some glory? God knows. God knows exactly how to set us up. Well, I wanted to give you a few instructions of how we're going to be doing some new things around here as we get through this season. Um, we are going to be able to continue our giving just like we normally do, but we'll be doing it online. You can do that at southcleveland.org. If you haven't set that up, you can simply go there right now or later on today. You can also text your giving. 423-207-1043 once you set up your online giving. And as you exit the building today, instead of exiting the parking lot, you'll have ushers at the doors. They'll have some containers there that you can just put your tithe and your offering in, or you can mail it, however is easiest for you. There's also some tithe envelopes on the desk as you come in, so you can take some of those with you. You can mail it in or just bring your tithe and offering back in your envelopes if you like those. But that way your giving can go uninterrupted. We want to make sure that we get God's blessings on everything that we have and not withhold anything from him. We want the blessings to be poured out. Also, for our, our guests that we have here, we say welcome. If this is your first time here at South Cleveland, it's a great place to be. This is a wonderful church family, and we're spread out over three services, but it's been a glorious day to see your faces outside of your cars. Sometimes we can't really see you there. But if you are first-time guests with us, you're welcome to fill out a Connect card at the desk and give it to a greeter or an usher there. Or we have set up a remind. All you have to do is text to the number 81010. You can simply put in the, uh, the little word at SC Guests. And then we'll contact you tomorrow if you make a decision for Jesus today, whether it be salvation, whether you're ready to be baptized, whether you're ready to join our church family, you can simply put in at SC Decision. We want to make sure that we stay connected to you, and we'll reach out to you tomorrow so you can simply stay connected to us that way. But again, we just want to say welcome. Today's actually National Smile Day if you're following along with our merry month of May. And we might not be able to greet each other with our handshakes and our hugs, but we certainly greet you and say we love you, we smile. You know what? A smiling is a universal language. Nothing can be taken away from that. And you are loved here. But I'm not going to take up any more time because Pastor Lipsy has been so ready to see you this morning. I'm going to welcome him to the stage. Would you welcome our bishop, Pastor Lipsy? Oh, you can do better than that if you're glad to be in the house of the Lord. Clap your hands. Come on, somebody. Somebody clap your hands and shout amen in this holy house. Shout unto the Lord, all ye lands. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I am glad to be in the house of God this morning. Let me tell you how thrilled I am to see you. Your pastor loves you. I miss seeing your smiling face. And I didn't know exactly what to expect today. Uh, I think the Lord has helped us uh, at South Cleveland over these two and a half, three months as we've met in the parking lot. Uh, we've been very encouraged with the people uh, that have stayed connected with us that way. And as I talked to other pastors, uh, I was getting a little bit discouraged and my faith was being beat up a little bit at the crowds they were having when they've come back in. But I want you to know I'm just thrilled uh, with what's happened uh, today. We're glad that our people uh, have come home. I believe they said we had 109 in the first service, 234 uh, in the second service. And it looks like we've got about 150 uh, in this service. And we are just so glad that you've come home. If you're glad to be back in God's house, would you clap your hands? Come on. And 
And we were just going to gauge, and, and we started with three. If we only needed two, we'd go to two, but I think we needed the three today. We had no more room for social distancing at the 930. Uh, so so if you're here at this one, please come back to this one or the 8 o'clock one. The 930 was packed, and we had to start sending people to the flow overflow room. So right now, these three services will facilitate us in social distancing if they break out the same way and we're just so glad that you've come I, I i hope you notice there's been a little bit of change here we've reworked uh the stage and and did some things to help beautify the house of the lord and we just are so glad to have you back uh here this morning because this place is not the same without you i want to ask you i know you've been standing in worship but i've been standing for three and a half hours uh preaching this good news of jesus i'd like you to stand to your feet on this first sunday to come back in in honor of God's word, standing is a sign of reverence and all you stand at the national anthem. I hope you stand uh, at the national anthem. You stand if you're in the service and a ranking officer walks in the room and that standing is a sign of honor and a sign of esteem and a sign of respect. And we stand this morning for the reading of God's word. If you have your Bibles, open with me to Psalm 122. And I have no doubt in 30 years of preaching, preached from this verse and loved this verse, but it's never meant more to me than it's meant to me today. And I hope that it means a great deal to you this morning. Psalm 122 and 1 says this. It says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Everybody say into. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And this morning I am thankful and I am more appreciative of being in the house of the Lord today. You know, I, I tried to think about it. Dr. Hutton Hoff and I've been serving the Lord and committed to him for over 30 years now. And I, I asked my wife, how many Sundays do you think we have missed being inside the house of the Lord before this pandemic started in 30 years? And we've decided maybe there have been three weeks that we have not been inside. Three Sundays in 30 years that I have not entered into the house of the Lord. And so it has been a shock to my system to spend two and a half months not entering into the house of the Lord. So this morning, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. The Bible says this in the 100th Psalm. Just stay with me one moment before you see it. The 100th Psalm says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. All your lands serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing, know ye that the Lord, He is God. Does anybody believe that today? Know ye that the Lord, He is God. Debbie, listen to this next phrase. It is He that made us and not we ourselves. Have you ever seen someone or heard someone who became a millionaire or became wealthy and they said, I'm a self-made millionaire? I'm a self-made man. I've got news for you. It doesn't matter if you've got a dollar in the bank or $14 million in the bank. The Bible says, know ye this, the Lord, he is God, and it is he that made us, not we ourselves. And then the next verse, listen to the next verse, because the next verse gives me reason to shout this morning. Enter into, everybody say into. Enter into his courts with praise and into, everybody say into, into his gates with thanksgiving. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. Does anybody believe he's good? I said, I, you ought to just rattle him a little bit on that. I said for the Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations this morning, I am thankful to enter into his courts, to enter into his gates, to enter into his doors, to enter into this house and bless his name. Psalm 150 says, 
praise ye the Lord in his sanctuary. Is anybody glad to be in his sanctuary? Praise ye the Lord in the firmament of his power. Praise the Lord for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. We're told in that scripture, Isaiah, to praise him with the, with the stringed instruments and organs. We're told to praise him with the timbrel and dance. We're told to praise him on the loud cymbals and on the high crashing cymbals. And then we're told at the close of that verse, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Why don't somebody take about 30 seconds and just bless the name of the Lord in his house? God anoint us to be more thankful for the privilege of entering your house than we've ever been before. And we'll be careful to give you praise, glory, and honor. Bless the reading of your word and speak to your people today. And God's people said, amen and amen. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. Thank you for helping me this morning. We are glad you are in his house this morning. And we want God to speak to you. Now listen, I have been on a time crunch in the first two services, and they've, they've given me a clock countdown up there on the back row and told me how long I had to preach and when I need to wind it down. I don't know why they got that clock going now. There ain't nobody coming in here after you. Ah, somebody say, I picked the wrong service. Some of you be sneaking in that 8 a.m. service in the morning. No, I, 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 I got good news for you. I've been drinking a lot while I was preaching because I preached hard. And in between the preaching, I've had to drink hot tea. I got so much liquid in me, I got to go pee-pee so bad I can't stand it. I'm going to get y'all out of here in a hurry. This this going to be the, <laughs> Terry, this going to be the shortest message of the day. <laughs> oh, that's on live stream, going out to the whole world to hear. That was, that was meant for us folk. There's an old adage. Everyone in this building, if you're over 20 years old, have employed these words at some point in your life. My mama loved this saying. She, if she didn't say it daily, I know she said it weekly as I was growing up. I just, I just heard it and heard it and heard it. I'll start it, and if you know it, finish it with me. My mama would walk in the front door of that old house out there in Boyce, Texas, on Farm Road 878, 879. You know what she'd say, Dr. Hudden? She'd say, be it ever so humble. How many believe that's true? Be, be it ever so humble, there's no place like home. How many believe, and listen, I've got, it doesn't matter this morning if you live in a 10,000 square foot mansion or if you live in a 1,000 square foot shotgun house. It doesn't matter if your house is worth $10 million or if your house is worth $62,000. When you walk into your house and you sit down, there's no place like home. If you believe that, shout amen. My wife and I live 900 miles away from our hometowns of Ennis, Waxahachie, and Corsicana. My wife and I live 900 miles away from her mother and father and our brothers and sisters and nephews and nieces. But when Thanksgiving comes and when Christmas comes, I have no intention of making that 900-mile drive, not because I don't love my family and not because I don't want to see them, but I just kind of like waking up in my own house. If you know what I'm talking about, shout amen. I, I kind of like sitting at my own table and eating food from my own table in comfortable surroundings. I like sitting in my chair. As a matter of fact, since Peyton and Zach are up from Nashville, give them a hand, tell them you're glad to see them all the way from from Nashville, Tennessee. Lance, last night I walked in my living room and Peyton and Zach were cuddled up in my chair. They were in my spot in that living room. And I looked at them, Herb Cannon, and I just I just motioned for them to move. And I said, get out of Archie's chair. And my little 22-year-old daughter looked at me and said, who in the world is Archie? What are you, what, what are you talking about? She didn't understand what I was talking about when I said, get out of Archie's chair. There is indeed no place like home. Home, but I want to take that a step further to you, and I want to announce to you 
there is no house like this house. If you believe that, you ought to clap your hands. To turn, matter of fact, don't, don't spit on them, but just turn to your neighbor and nod your head and tell them there's no house like this house. I've got news for you. There are things, Grover Hope, that take place with frequency in this house. When I'm talking about this house, I'm not just talking about 1846 Volunteer Drive. It's true of that address, but I'm talking about his house. There is no house like his house. And there are miracles and signs and wonders and restoration and healing and help and hope that take place with frequency in his house, Dave Privet, that don't take place anywhere else with that kind of fr- there, there is something special about his house. If you believe it, wave your hand so I know um, that they believed it in the first two services. There's something special. We say, Brother Lipsy, what's special about his house? I'll tell you one thing that's special about his house. It was in his house. It was in his house, Stephanie Moody, that I made my first profession of faith in Christ and the finished work of the cross. It was in his house that the word of God came to life in my heart. You see, the Bible says, Dr. Huttenhoff, that faith cometh by hearing, and hearing, somebody help me, the word of the Lord. And as a little boy, eight, nine years old, I would hear an old preacher by the name of Red Collins as he preached about the goodness of God. Charlie Moody is shaking his head. Yes, he knew. Oh, Red Collins, boy, he was a flat-footed gospel preacher, the likes of which you've never seen. And as a little bitty boy, I heard that man stand behind the sacred desk and declare that John 3.16 says, for God so love the world, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And in the house of the Lord, I made my first profession of faith. Why do you think his house is a special house, Brother Lipsy? Because it was in his house that I spoke with unknown tongues for the first time. Listen, I was a little bitty boy at 1101 South Hall Street in Ennis, Texas. It was a service much like any other service, and I was bored and uninterested and uninvolved. The singing was taking place. The preaching was taking place. I was on the back row playing dot to dot. Did anybody else play dot to dot in church services on the church bulletin? I was playing dot to dot with Dana Perry and I was telling her when service gets out tonight, meet me behind the dump and I'm going to kiss you glory to his name. And all of, listen, I was no more worshiping God than a man in the moon. And all all of a sudden, listen, today is Pentecost Sunday, and we're in a Pentecostal church. All of a sudden, in that Pentecostal church, the wind started blowing. All of a sudden, in that service that I was bored with and uninvolved with, the fire of God started falling. J.T. Venable started running around the building. Sister Roger started dancing and shouting. My daddy started leaping. Brother Collins was playing his tamarind, and in the house of the Lord, this little boy stood up, and for the first time, ever begin to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. I'm telling you there is something special about his house. If you believe it, you ought to clap your hands and shout amen. What else, Brother Lipsy, is special about his house? In his house, I have been reminded over and over and over again that the incorruptible seed of the gospel of Jesus was planted inside of my heart and that no matter where I went or what I did, I could never get away from it. What do you mean, Brother Lipsy? Listen, I, I spent six years backslidden, six years in addiction, six years in drugs and alcohol. And Brother uh, Lindsay, many times in those six years, I would go to the house of the Lord. Not, not because I wanted to worship, not because I was a disciple of Jesus, but it was a special day, Brother Grover. It was Christmas or it was Easter, it was Mother's Day, and I went there not intending Sister Hathcock to worship, not intending to talk to God or have God talk to me. I was just going to bless my mama, but Debbie Moody, I got news for you. Every time as a drugged, alcoholic teenage kid that I went to his house and sat down in a chair in his room, listen, there were people in that room that pointed their fingers at me and said, what's he 
doing here? He was drinking last night. He's going to leave here and go to the drug house. There were people in that room that were critical of me, that were negative of me, and thought I didn't have any business being there. But I got news for you. Every time I went, the spirit of the living God would begin to speak to me in my backslidden state, and he would say, I love you. I died for you. I've got great plans for your life, and I'm calling you home. Listen, it was an incorruptible seed inside of me that no matter what I did, I couldn't get away from. And that seed was always revealed and watered and strengthened in his house. What's special about his house, Brother Lipsy? It was in his house that I was called to preach the gospel. I, I, can, I can take you to the little chapel in East Dallas. It's not beautiful like this beautiful sanctuary that your daddy built 15, 13 years ago. It's, it's not as attractive as this. Listen, that little building could probably seat 100 people, Debbie Moody. That, that little building couldn't have been sold for $100,000. It was in East Dallas off of I-30 over there at Munger Lane. Y'all know that area. Listen, you, 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 can't, you can't give land away over there. I mean, it's in the hood. And in the hood, sitting in the choir loft, Listening to a testimony, the Spirit of the living God spoke to me. And he said, son, I've called you to preach this gospel to the nations. I'm giving you the pearl of great price. I'm going to open doors before you in your ministry that no one else can open. I'm going to bless you indeed. I'm going to enlarge your territory. I'm going to keep. And in his house, he called. Why is his house special? It was in his house that I met that woman over there. I joined the ministerial internship program. They sent me to the Corsicana Church of God to be trained and equipped and to learn about ministry. The problem was the first person I saw when I walked into a Sunday school class was that woman right there. She, she wasn't a woman then. She was a girl. She was 17 years old. She had hair down here below her backside. She had the most beautiful eyes I'd ever seen. Listen, the teacher of that Sunday school class was supposed to be one whooper whopper speaker and one whooper whopper communicator of the gospel. I didn't hear anything he said. He, he used some Greek. He used some Hebrew. It didn't impress me in any shape, form, or fashion because I just kept looking at that girl across the aisle. It was in his house that I met her. As a matter of fact, it was in his house that she and I had her first date. I was preaching a revival at the Assembly of God in Ennis, Texas. She came and she sang with me. Listen to me. It was in his house that we stood at an altar together and that we made covenant together and that we committed our lives together. Why is his house special? Because in his house, Debbie Moody, I dedicated and consecrated Peyton, Lipsy, Hampton, Easton, Duval, Lipsy, Ethan, Davis, Lipsy, to the Lord of heaven and earth for his cause and for his purpose. And you know what I know, Brother Hope? I know that because I dedicated them to the Lord's call and and purpose and agenda in their lives that no matter where they go or what they do, that same incorruptible seed that was inside of me that I couldn't get away from, I'm guaranteed that it will go. Listen, I'm not guaranteed they'll never sin. I'm not guaranteed they'll never walk away from God, but I'm guaranteed that if they do, the incorruptible seed of God's Word will go with them and love them and bring them back to the house. Oh, if you believe it, you ought to clap your hands. Why? Why is his house special? Because in his house, sick people are healed. In his house, the aimless find their way. In his house, the depressed, the oppressed, and the possessed are set free and made free indeed. In his house. I've witnessed things take place inside the sanctuary, inside the courts, inside the gates and the house of the Lord that I've seen happen nowhere else. There may be no place like home, but there's no house like his house. I ask people on Facebook to talk to me and tell me something remarkable, something that is etched in their minds and spirits that have took place in his house. The first person to respond 
is a man named Wade Miller. You don't know him. Wade Miller is a, a retired command sergeant major in the United States Army. He, he is an airborne ranger. He has jumped out of an airplane, I think, 1,048 times. He is a true American hero. And when I said, tell me something remarkable that's happened to you in his house, here is what he came on and said, Rafe. He came on and said, chapel number three. Named the fort, Fort So-and-So, Georgia. My third week of basic training. Named the date. I don't remember. July 15th, 1978. Then he said it was my third week of basic training in the United States Army. And in chapel number three, in the house of the Lord, he washed my sins away. I'm telling you, this house has things take place inside of it that don't take place in any other place with the frequency or the volume that they happen here. People begin to come on telling me things that have happened in here. Let me just share a couple of them with you this morning since no one else is coming in after you. Somebody said, I thought you had to go to the restroom. Mike Hall said, in this house, I spoke with unknown tongues for the first time. Pat Pat Story said, in this house, too many things have happened. We don't have enough time. There's not enough books in the world. Benny, listen, if you don't know Benny Hodges, he met you out in the parking lot today with a sign that said, Welcome Home. Benny Hodges said that in 1978, boils broke out over his entire body. He said three doctors were collaborating together and could not find what was wrong with him, and they had decided that he must have poisoned blood. They said, Mr. Hodges, we are going to have to begin draining you of your blood, cleansing it, and then reintroducing it to your body. He said, it is super dangerous. Benny said he turned to his wife and said, honey, I don't want to die. What are we going to do? She said, I have watched you sit through church service after church service, opportunity after opportunity, and you've not asked God to heal you. He said he went to church that next Wednesday night. He said the pastor was out of town and a layman was preaching. He said the layman said, does anybody need prayer? Benny Hodges jumped up to lay Amen laid their hands on him. They asked God to heal his body and do what the doctors couldn't do. He went home. He said when he went to church that night, there were 50 festering, blistering, running sores on his back. When he took his shirt off in his bedroom, his wife lifted her hand, began praying in tongues, and said they're drying up. And in two days, he had a perfect bill of health. You ought to give God praise for the fact that miracles take place in the house of the Lord. Wendy Hawkins worships in this house. She was in the first service, and she said, in this house, 1846, volunteer drive. She had just began worshiping here. She had left the church that she grew up in where she knew everyone and everyone knew her. Charlie, she said she was sitting in that balcony and she was feeling unloved, unknown, unrecognized, and she was grieving over her home church that she had left. She said she just expressed to God, God, I don't know if things will ever be the same. She said that when she declared, I don't know if things would ever be the same. Your son was standing on this platform and he was preaching and he said, right now, somebody hear me. You're in this building and you're too worried about being recognized. Coming to this house is not about being recognized. Coming to this house is about recognizing him. She said in that moment, in this house, in that balcony, God touched her heart, healed her wounds and made her whole. And she worships here every time. I I'm telling you there are special things that happen when you get in this house. So what's something you remember? Carissa McConnell said, I remember Papa. Anybody remember Papa Curtis? She said, I remember Papa running, and I, I've seen him run so many times my five years of pastoring this church, but the most memorable for me was right at the end. He, he, was, he was declining. He was getting feeble. And I had already told C.J. Minor, anytime Papa Curtis runs, 
Let me get back so I don't get Pentecostal spit on you. Anytime Paul, Paul Curtis can runs, I told CJ, you get out and run with him. Just put your hand on his back and go with Papa. And we did that for several months. But, but one day, P Papa had already lost such health that he was on a walker. I've been in Pentecostal church all my life. I've seen strange things <laughs> in the house of the Lord. But I'd never seen what I saw that day because I saw the Holy Ghost getting Brother Curtis' feet. And I seen a man with a walker get out and make a lap around the building, walker intact. What, what do you remember today about the house of the Lord? Here's what I'm telling you. I'm telling you there's no house like this house. I'm telling you miracles are available in this. I know you can be healed anywhere. I know people get saved at McDonald's. I know folks get the Holy Ghost at Walmart. I know it can happen anywhere, but I promise you more people have been saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, delivered, set free, and found direction in his house than any other place on the planet. And you need to be thankful for the privilege of being in his house. If you believe it, you ought to Clap your hands and shout amen with me. Do you know that anywhere else you go in life, there are separations that are made. There are distinguishing titles that are given. There is segregation. What do you mean, brother? Let's see, in the army, you are a private or a sergeant or a command sergeant major or a lieutenant or a captain or a major, or a colonel, or a general. You are separated by rank. At, at the workplace, you are separated by position and title. You are a laborer. You are a skilled worker. You are low-level management. You are mid-level management. You are CEO or chief operating officer. There are separations that are made. Financially, we are separated by titles and positions, the haves and the have-nots. We are, anywhere you go in life, you will be separated. This nation is experiencing chaotic division and strife over the separation of race today in a way that I've never seen in my lifetime. I know it's been worse in the past, but I've never seen it this way in my lifetime. And with the enemy of our soul wants is he wants the whites to back up in this corner and he wants the blacks to back up in this corner and he wants the Hispanic and the Latins to back up in this corner and he wants the Asians to back up in this corner. Listen, there are people trying to separate us at every turn, but can I tell you there's no house like his house because when you walk in his house, there's no big eyes and little you. When you walk in his house, you are not distinguished by your occupation. You are not Dr. Brad Huttenhoff, the veterinarian sitting on the front row, and I'm not Edwin Lipsy the preacher with the microphone in my hand. You're not Herb Cannon, the administrative administrator of the education. You're not the painter. You're not the carpenter. You're not the school teacher. You're not the vice principal. What do you mean? Who am I then, Brother Lipsy? When you come in this house, the ground is level at the foot of Calvary's cross, and we are sinners saved by the marvelous grace of Almighty God. No matter where you go to work or what you drive to get there or what kind of home you leave and go to, you know who you are when you come in his house. You're the apple of his eye. You're the fairest of 10,000 to his soul. You're his prize. This house is like no other place. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Now, the word Pentecost means 50th. Fifty days after the Feast of Passover comes the Feast of Pentecost. Jesus was crucified at Passover. Fifty days after the cross event, we find ourselves in our staple text. I got this new stage. Let me use it. We find ourselves at our staple text as Pentecostals. Acts chapter 2. Now, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were with one accord 
in one place. Everybody say one place. Ah, they were with one accord and in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled the place where they were sitting. And cloven tongues like as of fire appeared above each of them. And they all began to speak with other tongues as the, now listen, as Pentecostal believers, we focus on the last part of that verse, and rightly so. We focus on the fire, on the winds, and on the tongues. How many is thankful today for the fire, and for the wind, and for the tongues? If you're thankful for the Pentecostal experience, why don't you clap your hands and shout amen today? This morning, this morning I want to do something a little different. I got 12 minutes and 56 seconds. This morning, instead of focusing on the fire, the winds, and the tongues, I want to focus on an earlier phrase in that verse that says this, they were all one room. Everybody say one room. Huh? And they were all with one accord. Everybody say one accord. One room and one a court. Jackie Brewer, I have listened to it up to here for the last three months. I, I have had people give me their opinion, and some said their prophetical insight until I've had it up to here for the last three months with folks saying church will never be the same. And live stream and li Facebook live is the future of the church. Now let me stop and let me grant it and concur that the Lord has indeed done for us in this pandemic what he did for Joseph's brothers in the famine that struck Israel. You all remember the story of Joseph, don't you? Joseph's brother sold him into slavery. God gave him promotion and favor. He became second in charge of all of Egypt. Joseph's brothers then had to come to him because of the famine. Joseph revealed his identity to his brothers who had sold him into slavery and lied to his daddy and told him he'd been devoured by a beast. When Joseph revealed his identity, his brother said, oh no, what's he going to do? Is he going to hate us? Is he going to be vengeful? Is he going to be spiteful? And Joseph leaned in and he uttered these iconic words. He said, fear not, you meant it for my harm, but God has turned it around for the no doubt the enemy has wanted to use this pandemic and our inability to come into his sanctuary to harm the church, to separate the church, to silence the church, but I've got news for you. God has has indeed turned it around and through live stream and Facebook live and digital media, the gospel has been preached to the globe in the last three and a half months in an unprecedented fashion. People have been saved and received hope and direction and guidance as the gospel has went through the airways and I say to God be the glory for great things he has done. But hear me. Hear me. That does not mean that our new normal is going to be sitting at home in pajamas, eating peanut butter and toast, listening to the bishop preach. Hey, God has used it, but I still believe that there is power when God's people come together in one room. They were with one accord, and they were in one room. I've got news for you. You've not been in your last jam-packed church service. 
I've got, I know you don't want me laying hands on you this morning. I know you don't want somebody dancing by you and shouting. I know you don't want Clay Moody to take one of his running spells and run by you and you pat him on the back as he goes flying by. And we're going to do everything we can do to take precaution and to be careful as we navigate these days. But I still believe we're going to worship in unprecedented fashions in one room and in one accord because my there is power when God's people get together in everybody say one room oh yeah yeah I've seen things happen in one room okay, but brother it can't it happen everywhere yeah it can but but this place is fertile soil you see you can you, I, I know most of you don't know anything about blue bonnets. Me and Charlie know about blue bonnets. Clay knows about blue bonnets. Terry knows about blue bonnets. You Tennesseans, blue bonnets. It's the state flower of Texas. It, it's the prettiest thing you ever saw in your life. Oh, yes, it is. Debbie, help me. And, and a blue bonnet can grow anywhere. As a matter of fact, I just threw out a bunch of blue bonnet seed in the field behind my house. A blue bonnet can grow anywhere, but there's something about Texas soil that calls it to be indigenous. Ha! Miracles can happen anywhere. Glory. You ever had glory fall on you in the car? It can happen. But I'm telling you, when we get together as people of like precious faith and we put our faith and our confidence and our hope and our trust in God together in one room. The Bible said one will put a thousand to flight. What will two do? Two will put ten thousand to flight. The, the, listen, if, if you believe it's okay to walk alone and never get in a room like this for the rest of your life, you better read the scripture because the Bible pronounces woes on people who walk alone, Charlie Booty. The Bible says woe unto him who walks alone. Listen, live stream is fantastic. The anointing goes through it. But, but it's to help people who can't get here. Now, now listen, if, if, if you're at home today and you're physically able and you've got kids and you just want, I'm not, I'm not talking about being cautious during this moment. I'm talking about for the life of live stream. Live stream is for people who cannot get here. Facebook Live is for people who cannot make it. But listen to me. If you're strong and you're healthy and God's hand is on your life and you're young and you don't have underlying issues, there is power that happens when we come together. Woe unto him who walks alone. But if two walk together, somebody say, you got to get together. What is the woe of him who walks alone? If he falls into a ditch, what happens? No one. Anybody ever fell into a ditch? I got five minutes and 46 seconds. Anybody ever, anybody, I fell into a ditch this week. Anybody ever thought you was having a Job moment in your life? I had me a Job week. Sunday morning, the drive shaft fell out of my Mustang. So I took my truck with the classic cars to the Shake Shack. I'm parked at the Shake Sack, sitting in a lawn chair, eating my lunch, and somebody backs up and hits my truck. It's, it's bad. I'm Job this week. Tuesday morning, I get on my back. I'm training for that Iron Man. And I'm driving down Highway 64. And somebody almost hits me. Causes me to swerve. The, the pavement falls off an inch and a half from the highway to the shoulder. I'm going downhill 30 plus miles an hour and I wipe out. I've got no skin on my body from here to here on this side. It's been the worst. I, listen, if there had been a high bridge, I'd have jumped off of it Wednesday morning. I have been in the worst pain that you could possibly. Um, I'm tell, but, but when I fell in the ditch, somebody came and picked me up. Because we walked together. I called my wife. I said, you got to come get me, baby. I said, I'm bleeding and I'm bruised and I'm battered. And, and because we walked together, she came and she, she picked me up. She, she, let me tell you a little funny story. This don't count against my preaching time. <laughs> Stephanie, she put me in the bathtub. No water, just the bathtub. And my mama's anointing gets on her and she's got hydrogen peroxide. Oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh, I'm too close. She, she's getting some things ready to put that hydrogen. Pr- there is no skin on me anywhere. And I finally get positioned in a comfortable place. Today's Pentecost. I want to talk to you about Pentecost. I finally get positioned in a comfortable place in that bathtub. And she's out of the room getting ready to torture me. Dr. Huttenhoff, I finally got a position. Oh, anybody ever been there? He was trying to find a place. And I finally got there. <sighs> I took a breath. My eyes are closed, Stephen. And I finally found a second of peace for the first time in an hour of torment and pain. And out of that second of peace, Dave Privet, I'm fixing to pray in the spirit. I'm, I'm opening my mouth, and what I think I will say is my regular praying. I'm, I'm expecting, Rimo bo satalababashe. That's what I'm expecting. Rimo bo satalababashe. I'm ready to hear that beautiful language that I've been praying in for 30 years come out of my mouth. And right as I opened my mouth, my eyes were closed. I did not know this. Don had found the peroxide. Tina, I open my mouth and a half gallon of peroxide hits my body. My eyes pop open the size of the Coke can bottle. My eyes are this big and I, my mouth is already open. The language is ready to come. But my eyes wide open. I say, ta, 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 ta. And I looked at her with fury. She backed up. She said, that was not the Holy Ghost. (laughs) I said, you got, we did not want that interpretation. But listen, listen. Because I walked with her, she picked me up. I want you to hear me. There's power in the room. On the day of Pentecost, they were in one room in one accord. The church is going to keep being the church. We're going to keep doing what we're going to keep. We're going to take precautions. We're going to be careful. We're not having a Jericho march this morning. But hear me! There is still power when we get in the room. And I prophesy over this house that the greatest winds of the Spirit that we've ever seen blow through this building are not in the past, they're in the future. The greatest miracles we've ever seen revealed in these altars are not in the past, they are in the future. God is still God. Pentecost is still real. His word still says, stand to your feet with me, 42 seconds. His word still says, the gates of hell shall not, there is power in this room. This this morning, in the early service, 8 o'clock, Frankie Durham came in. She had her daughter and granddaughter. I don't know that I've ever met them. They sat about where Lance Kochmeyer is sitting today. And I watched, I, I don't know her daughter, don't know what's going on in her life but I watched as I preached about the majesty of what can be in this room I watched the incorruptible seed that Frankie had put in her begin to blossom I watched tears begin to flood down her face she lifted her hand and said preacher in this house I need him to wash my sins away and I'm telling you that there is saved and there is gloriously saved. She got gloriously saved sitting right there two hours ago. That's what happens in this house. What, What do you need from this house today? If you need salvation, he'll wash your sins away. Those things happen in the house. If you need healing, 
Boy, do I need healing this morning. He'll heal your body in this house. If you're lost and need direction, you're moving aimlessly through this situation and this circumstance, and you don't know where to turn, he'll lead, guide, and direct you from this. There is power in this room. Whatever you need. Right now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes all over this house. And I want you to think about your deepest need. What, what can God do for you today? What request will you make of Him? Then I want to remind you that He is always faithful. But His promises have been faithfully fulfilled in his house more than any other place in life throughout the ages. And today, in this house, I release the anointing of the Holy Ghost to touch your body, to save your soul, to bring peace to your chaotic situation, to bring hope to your hopelessness, to bring purpose to your wanderings. Oh, oh, oh. I hear the voice of the Lord telling me to say to you that he is with you. I hear the Lord saying I'm right by your side. I'm holding your hand. You're not alone. I'm with you. I've redeemed you. I've called you by name and written your name in the book of heaven. God says to you today, you're the apple of my eye. You're my prize creation. You're my handiwork. And I've not created you and left you to yourself. I am with you in every circumstance of your life. I, I hear the word of the Lord saying, don't be weary in putting your left foot in front of your right foot. I, I know, I know you're tired. I know you've tried. I know you've thought it was over in days gone by. But keep moving, says the Lord. Keep trusting, says the Lord. Keep believing me. I, I am who you've always said I am. I will do what you have always professed I will do. Do not let this shaking shake you out of covenant with me. I'm the Lord God of heaven, and I am true to my word. I'm not anxious. I'm not worried. I'm not fearful, says the Lord. I've got you in the palm of my hand, and I give you the hope of my promise today that all shall be well with you and everything that pertains to you. Would you just slip your hands to heaven and worship him? Say that. Say that. Lord. I feel Jesus. Ha. I feel Jesus. And I feel
thank you, Lord. Thank you for letting us be in your house. Thank you for letting us hear your word. Thank you for answering our prayers, moving your hand, touching our lives. God, I pray that something spectacular is revealed in hearts and minds from this journey into your house that hope is given that promises are remembered and that miracles are given their first steps today and that we will walk to a better place tomorrow and God's people said if you're glad to be in this house give him praise nobody leave Come on, clap your hands and give him praise. I love you. I love you. And I want God's best for your life. I need you to stay with me. I need you to hold. I, I, I want to see you next Sunday morning. Wednesday night I'll be preaching from the podium. I want to see you Wednesday night. I thank God for the platform you give us to ministry. Hey, Piper Davis has left the hospital and is in an apartment in Nashville doing phenomenal. Clap your hands and shout. Nate, Nate is going to lead us in a song of worship. You can't just leave. Just give us one moment. The ushers will dismiss you from the back to the front. It, it, it only takes a moment. It'll take three minutes to get you all out of here. All, the ushers are at the back. If you've got your tithe and offering, drop it in the bucket. Tell somebody you love them. The lobby, the parking lot is the new lobby. Make your way to the parking lot without stopping and fellowshipping with people. I love you, and I'll see you next week. Ushers, dismiss them row by row. Sing it, Nate. I feel Jesus.